Hello dear people and welcome to another exciting episode about aviation history and wargaming right here on Joe Mayday's TV channel. Our today's topic is going to be none other than the legendary P-51 Mustang. And I know you're probably wondering, what is there more to be said about this truly magnificent aircraft? It appeared in documentaries, TV shows and movies, and some even went so far, as they claim that the aircraft practically single-handedly won the war for the Allies. Well, in my opinion, and we all do know what Clint Eastwood said about opinions, those claims are a bit far-fetched. But nevertheless, we are talking about an extraordinary long-range bomber escort fighter. So, first things first, let's go over some basics. The whole story started in the April of 1940, when the British government established a purchasing commission in the United States, led by Sir Henry Self. The British were keen to acquire P-40 aircraft, but the Curtis's production plant was already running at full capacity. So, when the NNA representatives that were supplying trainer aircraft for the Royal Air Force have approached the British Purchasing Commission and they wanted to offer them their new medium bomber, the B-21 Mitchell. British had a different idea. They were wondering if they purchased a license for P-40 from Curtis, could this aircraft be produced at the NNA's production facilities? And what they received was somewhat of a daring answer. They received an offer of a completely new aircraft that was to be far superior to the P-40. And pretty soon they have shown they were not kidding. After just 102 days, a prototype rolled out of the production line with the designation NA-73X and it took to the skies on the 26th of October 1940. And thus the legend was born. In all, 16,776 P-51s were produced during the war and its pilots claimed almost 5,000 aerial victories producing the total of 275 aces, with most notable of them all Major George Preddy of the United States Air Force. So it was designed for the British, but it was used quite excessively by the Americans. But once again, you're probably wondering, why have the British continued to use this aircraft, even though later in the war they had a large number of Spitfires supplied to them, which was a truly brilliant design. Well, the P-51D model with its license build version of Merlin 66, had an aerial endurance of over 6 hours and could carry more than twice the amount of fuel compared to the Supermarine Spitfire in internal storage, making it the ideal plane for long-range escorts, so that the Allied bombers could slowly but effectively bring down the German war machine to its knees. And now let's see how it performs in the game. And let's be precise, we'll be playing a P-51D5 model. Well now, after some significant amount of time spent climbing, I happen to see a little dot down by one of our bases. And I was expecting a bomber that was flying low beneath our defenses, but the dot appears to be too small, so it has to be a fighter. And since I lost all this altitude, I'll really have to commit to this fight. So down we go. And after this brilliant maneuver I find myself, I position myself exactly where I want to be, but I have not maxed out the pilot yet. So I will not go into Gajin's uh, gameplay mechanics, I better shut up about it. I decide to accept this head-on and let the 50 Kels do its work. And the enemy BF-109 is on fire. And he is going down. But still I keep a close eye on him because lately a lot of enemy aircraft simply put their fire out. And that is quite frustrating and it is something that we will see later on in the game. But this time at least that is not the case, he actually went down and that is our first kill. And now we are off back to climbing and scanning the area for potential targets. We will need more altitude because the P-51 in War Thunder at least, it's a complete boomer and zoomer. It's got superior top speed, excellent top speed. But you do not stand much of a chance if you try to outmaneuver your opponents. So basically the idea is to keep high, keep fast, keep energy advantage 
and did attack the unsuspecting enemies. One of those who could outrun us is that P-47, but he gets taken out, thankfully. So that is one less thing to worry about. And now it is time to pick another target and to dive in on them. And we can see that Focke Wolf 190 making a climb. So he should be a relatively easy target. For a good pilot at least, not for me. So we fire burst to his side. A bit of spraying and praying is in place. But we do manage to get those hits in. He does catch fire and he should go down. But will he? The fire actually went out. What's up with that? I thought he was going down for sure. But I should have stayed a little bit longer on him, just to make sure. And maybe should have put in some more rounds at him. But as you might have seen, I'm not really familiar with the 50 kills. I'm way more used to the German armament. And always the idea of preserving your ammo comes first in my mind. And that is why this 190 managed to escape. So we only get an assist out of this one. But it doesn't matter. It is the team that counts. Another enemy is down. Let's win this one. Because it is all about winning in the end. It doesn't matter who brought the enemy down as long as he is down. And now it appears there is a 2 vs 2 fight going on. But worry not teammates because here we come with our questionable aiming abilities. But nevertheless we do arrive. We shall arrive. So it is a C-205 Italian fighter and a BF-109 versus the P-51 and a P-47. Unfortunately a P-47 gets taken out and another German has entered the fight or could enter the fight reasonably fast. A TA-154 I believe. And so we are off on a dive on the Italian fighter, the C-205. He disappeared in the clouds, but we should be able to pick him up. There he is, we can hear him. Maybe we are diving a bit on a sharp angle and the P-51 does not have an excellent rudder by any means. It has a poor rudder. But we have managed to position ourselves on the enemy's 6. And after some misses, finally shots on target and he loses his wing and he is definitely out. That is a kill number 2 I believe. And now it's time for a dive. And why you probably ask yourself once again? Well, because of this wonderful sight. The P-51 is out. We are practically all alone and we have a lot of completely unfriendly enemy planes on our tail. So let's put that superior speed to a test. The only thing we can do is basically try to outrun them. Yes, they are quite unfriendly and do wish to harm us, but our superior speed does take us out of the harm's way. So the plan now is to get to those friendlies. Hopefully some of the enemies will uh, dive on them and try to engage them. And then we will turn around and engage the enemies. That's the plan at least. Or maybe the enemies will just give up on their chase and go home. But that's not likely to happen, no. So our friendlies are a uh, Yak-3 and a P-38. So it should be a pretty even fight when the fight actually starts. 
The P38 is a bit higher than the Yak-3. He will have more advantage, energy advantage. And the Yak-3 is an excellent turner and he's a bit lower. So it should be a pretty even and fair fight. I'm trying to get a bit more altitude for the final fight. It is always an advantage. And so we have made it to our friendlies. The P-38 is quite close now and it's about time that we try to engage the enemies. And we'll have to try to catch them off guard a bit. They will probably be focused on the Yak-3 and the P-38 and we should be able to engage at least one of them from above. And so it is now or never. We are off into a dive on a T-8154. And the plan works out fine and those are some real nice hits on his left engine and he's going down. But I cannot pursue him because there is a BF-109 behind me. So I have to dive and use my speed once again and try to escape the pursuing enemies. One of which is on R6 and he's spraying bullets at us like there's no tomorrow. And now let the dogfight begin. We are turn fighting a G6, BF-109 G6. This is definitely going to be challenging. So maybe some epic music is in place. And he is out of the fight. He suffers damage to the tail and he is going down, it is only a matter of time. He does try to follow and maybe put in some rounds on us, but he has to go down with that damage. And now I became a bit greedy, because I saw him pulling out and I was trying to get behind him and take him out to get a kill, not another assist. And this could have been fatal, because I have engaged in an unnecessary head-on. We were really lucky there, but now we have to make our way to the airfield and land. Once again this was a completely unnecessary move and we are lucky to be alive. But let us continue with the game. And now for a completely safe and normal landing. As you can see for yourself, all of the procedures for a safe landing are being followed. This is a completely normal and safe method of implementing a landing. Basically a textbook example. We have also implemented a procedure called Oh my god, I almost hit that shed to my right. But we brilliantly missed it and we are safe on the ground, finally. So it is 3 kills to assist for now, not bad but not brilliant. But ok score. But we have gotten out of a really tough situation and now we have the game in our hands, there's just 2 enemies left. And we should be able to take them out and win the game. And pretty soon we shall actually see, will it actually happen. And we are ready for takeoff. Let's take out those enemies. And now, after quite a bit of climbing, I finally see a little dot in the distance. Now, this has to be one of the enemies that is left. So I make my way towards it. Now it is always a bit dangerous to attack the enemy in the clouds when you cannot basically see him. But what can you do about it? It is a bit strange that uh, in War Thunder I feel like the majority of games are played in awful weather. At least during some sort of an overcast weather. 
Can't we have a nice weather just once? Just a few battles in really nice and clear weather, clear skies. But still we are getting closer. And we can actually hear his engines now. So we must be getting really close. The engines are getting louder. We are getting closer. And there he is. And now there's a lot of spraying and praying and panic fighting if I may add. But we do bring him down. But we have also taken a lot of rounds to our engine. And so that is our fourth kill. But the fight is over for us. Even though we are just mildly damaged. The plane does not appear to be responsive anymore. Now we are losing just some unnecessary bits of the plane. But now we realize that we do have a hole in our left wing. And no plane can survive that. Absolutely none. And so this beautiful Yak-9 or Yak-3, sorry, manages to take the last enemy and we have actually won the game. Excellent. And a bravo to you, sir. So, all in all, it was a nice fun game. We have gotten 4 kills and 2 assists. And most importantly, the team played great and we have won the game. The P-51D, in my opinion, is a great plane, but it rather leaves a lot of things to be desired. That is really its only downside. But I guess we cannot have all, can we? And that is all for this time. If you have enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe and share. And I'll see you all next time. Until then, have a fantastic day.